Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about the bivalent or updated booster for COVID. And we're going to use two examples, my dad, who's 79 years old, and myself. I'm 49 years old. And with these two examples, we're going to wade through data and make decisions about who these updated boosters should be given to. My dad and I have had the benefit of some additional and helpful information because we're both involved in a cool study through the University of Texas at Austin called COVID Care Study. Every few months, we're asked to fill out a survey and then we go and give a blood sample. The report then gives us information about whether we've ever been infected with SARS-CoV-2 and our level of antibodies circulating in our system from our vaccines. My dad has received a total of three Moderna vaccines. He's gotten one and only one booster on August 26, 2021. He checked his antibody level in late July 2022 with the study, and it was 1,423. He's never contracted COVID-19. I've received a total of four Pfizer COVID vaccines. I've never contracted COVID-19, and my antibody level was 1,458. At what antibody level are you less likely to have a symptomatic COVID infection? We don't know the answers to these questions yet. And as I mentioned, I'm not really sure how helpful this data is now anyway, because we just don't know what antibody level is needed to provide protection. And this antibody level tells us nothing about the longer term immunity provided by T cells and B cells. So we really aren't getting a complete immunological picture with just antibody information. Okay, now that you've had that background, let's look at the data on the Pfizer and Moderna shots in general. And there's some interesting data that I think we should mention. An article in the Wall Street Journal alerted me to two interesting studies that looked at side effects from the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. The first study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in July 2022 and looked at over 433,000 veterans aged 18 and older. The participants received two doses of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, and they followed participants for 38 weeks after vaccination. Adverse events overall were low in both groups, but there appeared to be more adverse events in the Pfizer group. Let's look at this chart together. Just focus on these two columns. This column is the number of adverse events for the Pfizer vaccine, and this is the number of adverse events for the Moderna vaccine. Pfizer had a higher number of adverse events. Now, of course, some of these adverse events may have been because the Pfizer vaccine was not as strong or effective as the Moderna vaccine, and maybe more of them got COVID infections which caused these adverse events, and not just that one vaccine is safer than another, just simply that one is not as effective as the other. But it raises the question of whether we should all be getting the Moderna booster. Another article posted in the journal Vaccine this month seemed to also support these findings. They used phase three trial data that was published by Moderna and Pfizer and used to obtain their emergency use authorization from the FDA. Their independent analysis of the adverse effects after vaccination revealed that Pfizer had 36% more adverse events occur one month after receiving the second dose compared to placebo. And while Moderna had 6% more adverse events, these results were not statistically significant. The researchers openly admitted they were limited by the data provided, but it raises concerns since the FDA stated that serious adverse events for Pfizer were balanced between treatment groups. But the researchers disagreed with this finding and state, quote, in contrast to the FDA analysis, we found an excess risk of serious adverse events in the Pfizer trial. So now that leads me to discuss the data on the new boosters. The new shots are bivalent, adapted to target both the original strain of virus as well as the now dominant Omicron subvariants BA.4 and BA.5. Before considering this bivalent booster, you need to have gotten your first series of COVID shots or booster over two to three months ago or recovered from a COVID infection three or more months ago. Although some researchers suggest waiting six months after an infection or your last COVID vaccine is fine if you're not at high risk. The Moderna bivalent booster is available for anyone 18 or older, and the Pfizer bivalent booster is available for anyone 12 years or older. The new shot is likely to continue protecting against severe disease and death from COVID-19 as previous versions have done, 
but it hasn't been determined how much the new booster can help prevent transmission and infection. However, if you want a free booster, it's best to get it before January, since the government will likely stop paying for it around then. And so what does the data for these bivalent boosters show? Well, there's not much data, unfortunately. Back in June, the FDA's panel of independent vaccine experts met to consider developing a new booster that targets Omicron, given how quickly that variant was dominating new infections. And at the time, the two largest COVID-19 vaccine makers, Pfizer and Moderna, had already developed shots against an earlier Omicron variant, BA.1. But the panel decided that if the booster was going to target Omicron, the next one should protect against BA.4 and BA.5 subvariants and not BA.1. So they asked the vaccine manufacturers to develop a new bivalent vaccine, one that combined the original vaccine and also targeted BA.4 and BA.5. So at the end of August, both companies submitted data on their new bivalent vaccines to the FDA for emergency use authorization. But the data only included information on the safety and efficacy of the booster in animals. Human studies are planned and are ongoing at this time, but data is not available. We do have human data from the vaccine developed against BA.1, and it was underwhelming. The immune response was between one and a half and two times larger than what the original vaccines produced, and we're actually looking for a much larger response. And without human data from the bivalent vaccines focused on BA.4 and BA.5, we don't know if the immune response is going to be sufficient. So for me, it's not really the safety profile that I'm worried about. These boosters are going to be just as safe as the prior boosters that we have, but I'd like to see human data that shows the immunological response that we're getting with these bivalent boosters. I think it's a hard sell otherwise to healthy adults. But remember that COVID-19 is still killing hundreds of people every day in the United States. Earlier in the pandemic, it was killing younger and healthier people, but after vaccines and better treatments, the deaths are now likely to be in adults older than 65 with other chronic health issues. So. Here's my guidance. If you're older than 65, get the bivalent booster, especially if you have not gotten any other boosters until now. If you've completed your primary vaccine series, which was likely two shots of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, then you'll be considered fully vaccinated if you get the bivalent booster. And based on data that more complications occurred with those that received the Pfizer vaccines in general, I would recommend getting the Moderna bivalent booster. So I would recommend that my dad get the Moderna bivalent booster now, since his last booster was 13 months ago. If you're between the ages of 18 and 49 and are healthy and have gotten your primary series of vaccines, and especially if you've gotten one or two other boosters, I think it's fine to wait and see how the bivalent boosters fare as we get more data on the immune response obtained in humans. So I'm going to wait to get my bivalent booster until I see more data. I got my last booster in December 2021, so I'll check back on the data in a few months to see what they show. And if I get a COVID infection in the meantime, I'll consider that my booster and hold off getting a shot. The group that makes me scratch my head and wish we had more data is the 50 to 64 year olds. This group really deserves a personalized conversation with your doctor. There's so many factors at play. If you're obese, have had a stroke or heart attack, I would seriously consider getting a booster if it's been more than six months since you've had a booster or infection. But this is such a personal decision. Thanks for joining me.